faith and also English so that they could function in the United States. And they also continued to preach and teach in German, most churches, until after World War I. When, after fighting a world war with Germany, it became unpopular to have German people preaching in German, and so finally, people began to preach and teach in English in the German churches. But you can see that the Baptists and the Methodists and the Episcopalians all had a big head start, and the Presbyterians had a big head start on Lutherans. That's why people don't know much about Lutheranism because we were latecomers to the scene. Lutherans were latecomers to the scene, carrying with them the Book of Concord, which were the written-down documents that were born out of the crucible heat of the Reformation between Martin Luther and the German theologians against Pope Leo X of Rome. And then something unique happened. After all these churches spread across, preaching their different variants of doctrine, a group of Methodists suddenly became convinced that the Holy Spirit was being re-poured out upon the land, and they began to speak in other tongues. They began to have manifestations of purported miracles, but that was the same with the Mormon church as well. But they began to speak in tongues and insist that if you really had the Holy Spirit at all, you would speak in tongues like they spoke in tongues in Acts chapter 2. And this group of Arminian, thinking that you can choose Jesus on your own, began to call themselves Pentecostals, people who believed that if you really are a Christian, you're going to speak in tongues because that's how the Holy Spirit is manifested. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, you will speak in other tongues. There are two major Pentecostal groups in the United States, the Assemblies of God and the United Pentecostal Church. The United Pentecostal Church goes so far as to deny the Trinity altogether and say that Jesus is the only God we deal with uh, in the sense that there's only Jesus. Uh, They're modalists, which means that they believe that God said, oh, now I'm the Father, oops, now I'm the Son, I've changed my mind, now I'm the Holy Spirit. And they baptize in the name of Jesus, they don't even baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The United Pentecostals took hold mostly in the Deep South, and to this day that's where they flourish, and some places in the Midwest. Now, the Assemblies of God were a different sort. They retained their doctrine of the Trinity, But they insisted on this worship, which, as I just said, goes from man to God instead of God to man. And they began to have meetings where people would have ecstatic utterances. They they were called holy rollers in the in the frontier lands because they would be they would claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit and roll around on the ground and have manifestations that would even convince. Simon the Magician in the book of Acts. The Assemblies of God began to preach and teach these things. That if you really are a Christian, if you really are baptized, if you really are a Christian, you will speak in tongues and signs and wonders will follow. Then came a tremendous group of people out of this Pentecostal movement. Catherine Kuhlman, Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Copeland, All of the people that you see generally on TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jan, the whole bunch, they're all Pentecostals. Many of the Assemblies of God churches are mega churches. They put their name outside the church as a family church or or some other kind of, uh, you know, generic name. But down deep, their underpinning is the Assemblies of God. And that's who they're associated with. And down deep, they are Pentecostals. The Baptists split over the Civil War. And so there are Northern Baptists and there are Southern Baptists. That is the way it is in the United States. A blenderful 
of doctrines and teachings and churches that split upon splits of churches who split some more. And in this blender on frappe, there are Lutherans. Lutherans who have the same books about what is believed and taught in the Book of Concord, the same teachings since the 1500s, never changed their minds. The, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the Wisconsin Synod, and some other synods have never departed from the teachings as they were laid out in the Book of Concord as the true Christian church reforming the Roman Catholic Church. The ELCA, on the other hand, although they proclaim that they hold to the Book of Concord, unfortunately gave in to some secular teachings that many mainline denominations, including the Presbyterians and the Methodists and many others, they gave in to the great rationalism, which ironically originated in Germany, that undermined the authority of Scripture so that Scripture was no longer in their mind trustworthy. And so they departed from a direct interpretation of the Bible as the only inspired word of God, and that led to many, many errors and many false teachings. And so that's where we stand today. You open a phone book, and you will find every single one of these denominations I have mentioned. There will not be one that you won't see, because I think I've mentioned just about as many as I can in this period of time. But understand that they all are either Lutheran in origin, holding on to the Book of Concord and the true teachings of the Book of Concord, we say that the Book of Concord is a clear explanation and correct explanation of the Word of God. So we look at the Bible through the presuppositions and the teachings and the explanations of the Book of Concord. The Bible can be interpreted in a million different ways. Look around, look in the phone book, you'll see for yourself. But the Lutheran said no, this is what the Bible means. This is what the Bible teaches. And we find this fantastic treasure in the Book of Concord. The other denominations have split, re-split, and split again. Now to the point that anybody can start a church. Anybody with some charisma, anybody that has a nice band, anybody that can entertain the, entertain the crowds, can certainly gather people just like they did during what was called the revivalist period in America, where tents, pe preachers with tents would go across the United States preaching, pretending to heal, and teaching false doctrines, but gathering the crowds, God's own circus, I suppose. But now things have changed because now the Lutherans are no longer parochial. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is no longer parochial. The Lutherans are coming on strong now in the United States because the people who are truly looking for Christian foundations really find that they only have two options if they're going to stick with the Holy Scriptures and if they're going to stick with the traditional teachings and understandings of, yes, the Athanasian, the Nicene, and the Apostles' Creed. They have the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, as an option, and they have the Roman Catholic Church as an option, and some see the Orthodox Church as an option because they never departed from the Athanasian, the Nicene, and the Apostles' Creeds. I think the Apostles would be quite shocked if they could see what happened. And maybe they can see from heaven, I don't know. But I think they would be quite surprised to see the plethora of nonsense that is taught in the name of God. Almost anyone can write a book on anything. Joyce Meyer and her ilk. These, these cults of personality. Jimmy Swaggart before his great fall. Joel Olstein now in the flaming popularity that he's experiencing right now. All of these people are Pentecostals. All of them. They believe that you have to choose God, that baptism is only valid if it's after you believe, and that if you really have the Holy Spirit, you'll speak in other tongues. How different 
from the Orthodox Church. How different from the church that taught the Athanasian, the Apostles, and the Nicene Creeds. Here we have the church family. Now, it's not very complicated when you look at it this way. It's like a firework. The firework exploded, and at first there were only four streamers. Lutherans, Calvinists, Baptists, and the Church of England. But then each one of those burst into a thousand firecrackers, making noises and shining little lights. Some have arisen, some have died off. But the denominations that we see in the United States now all flow from these four fountain heads. So if you're looking for a church, you have to ask yourself a question. Are all churches the same? The answer is no. Do they all teach the same thing? They most certainly do not. The churches that exist, denominations across the United States and the world, do not teach the same things. If we all taught the same things, we'd all be in the same building. We don't teach the same things. And the differences are significant because they're over who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and how we receive what Jesus did for us through his salvific death on the cross and his subsequent resurrection. So if you're looking for a church, you have to ask yourself, number one, do I believe the Bible to be the word of God? If you do, then you find yourself looking at churches who believe that. The Baptist churches say they do, and all the churches say they do. But you will have to decide for yourself. The only way to do that is to say, what do you mean by these teachings? And I tell you, it all comes from Lutheranism, Calvinism, Anabaptism and the Baptists, and the Church of England, together with Methodism. It is a very difficult time in the life of people looking for a church home, to say the least. Because there are so many voices, radio stations donated to music that has nothing to do with the true church of the living God, and preachers who have no problem preaching things that are completely incorrect, if you're judging according to the Athanasian Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, and the inerrant Word of God. The differences are significant, but the choices are simple. If you truly want to align yourself with true Christianity, I can tell you from my own experience, the true interpretation of the Word of God is to be found in the Book of Concord. Go to any church, any Lutheran church, Missouri Synod, and ask the pastor for a copy. And he will loan it to you so fast and ask him for lessons. Attend, see for yourself. My friends, the noise is mighty. And it started with one man with a nail and a hammer and 95 really good questions. Why are we doing it this way? It's amazing to me that as the last apostle expired and as he went on to his his eternal glory, It's amazing to me that St. John, by tradition, who did die last, could not possibly have imagined what was going to occur in the name of Jesus Christ. There have been tremendous things done in the name of Christ, and there have been horrific things done in the name of Christ. The family feud of the Christian church has been long and hard. But now the Christian church faces something far more disastrous than our disagreements with each other. For the wave of neo-paganism is coming so quickly and scientism so distinctly and atheism so aggressively that people who desire the true Christian religion are going to have to make some very serious, very thoughtful choices. As you look in your phone book at all the different churches, remember, all from Luther, Calvin, 
the Anabaptists, and the Church of England. If you can remember those four, 